my Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent, and in the Gospel of today's Mass, we read about the resurrection of Lazarus. Lazarus and his two sisters, Martha and Mary, were good friends of Jesus. Jesus would visit them at their home in Bethany. He would rest there. He would have a good time there. In fact, the Gospel says that he loved them. And at one point, Lazarus becomes ill, a very serious illness that will end up killing him. And Jesus is told by his disciples that Lazarus is sick. And it seems that they're telling him to go to him, to go cure Lazarus. But Jesus says, no, let's wait. He ends up waiting a few days. And during that time, Lazarus dies. Very striking, right? We know Jesus has the power to cure, to save someone from death. And this is someone that he clearly loved. And we know he loves everybody, each and every one. Um, but in his human life here on earth, he had a very special relationship with Lazarus. And yet he chooses to let Lazarus die. And as a consequence, Lazarus' sisters cry and weep and are very sad. And when Jesus finally goes to Bethany, after the fact, after Lazarus has died, he goes there and he counters a very sorrowful scene, such that Jesus himself weeps, seeing Martha and Mary sad and everybody, and Lazarus in the tomb. And Jesus will, will raise him from the dead. He'll bring him back to life. Even though he's been dead for four days, Jesus performs this amazing miracle. And so we look to you, Jesus, and we ask you, what do you want to tell us with all this? It can seem a bit mysterious, perhaps, that Jesus allows him to suffer. Why do you let him suffer if he was just going to raise him from the dead in the end? Well, maybe one thing that Jesus is trying to tell us is, is that suffering and death don't have the last word. Even though God permits them to happen, good can be brought out of them, and they don't have the last word. God does. Jesus does. In fact, if we go to the gospel scene, we go to the text, when Jesus decides to go to Bethany, he knows that Lazarus already died. And he tells his followers, the disciples who are with him, he says, Lazarus has died, and I'm glad for you that I was not there, that he was not there to save him, so that you may believe. Let us go to him. Jesus, you waited for him to die. You allowed it to happen in order to show us that suffering and death are not the greatest evil on earth. Sin is. And that you are the resurrection and the life, as you, as you yourself said. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Even if he dies, we'll live. Jesus is telling us that death is not the end. In fact, what Jesus does with death is it becomes the door through which we go in order to get to heaven. Isn't that amazing? It 
becomes our pathway to heaven, actually. And so, one of the consequences of all this is a great faith in Jesus. Jesus, I believe in you. I trust you. And along with that is not living in fear of death. I don't mean we should be imprudent. Oh, we should be prudent. We should take care of ourselves. We should try to live as long as we can, doing lots of good in this earth. But I'm not going to live in with some kind of attitude of, of paranoia that I don't know when death is going to come for me. No, we can go through this life with peace, even though I don't know when I'm going to die. We can live life to the full, knowing that at some point it's going to end. Let's enjoy the moment. Each moment is a gift. And yes, there are difficulties, there are sufferings, and there's so many other joys and, and pleasures that God gives us. Let's not miss out on them because of fear. Let us not miss out on the opportunity to give God thanks because I'm afraid of, of what might happen to me or whether I'm going to get whether I will become sick or whether I will die. And these things, of course, are very difficult. Right? We have to realize that we're not alone, that Jesus Christ is by our side. A few years ago, one of my older cousins was, was very sick and he was dying. Um, and he had a brutal illness that killed him in about two months. And about a month into it, I was visiting him along with my other cousins and my uncle and my aunt, visiting him in the hospital, and someone had brought him a bag of beef jerky. And he was eating he was eating the beef jerky, enjoying it very much. And uh after you know, he would eat two or three pieces and then he would give me one and he would say, Live it up. And then he would go on eating, and then two or three pieces later He'd give me a piece and say, live it up. Live it up. Right? Here's a man who is who who had a who had a terrible illness that everybody knew there wasn't a miracle that he was going to die from it. And that's what happened. He did die from it. And he was living it up with his family, with beef jerky, and encouraging others to do the same. Let's live it up. Let's enjoy life. And life with a capital L. Life with God. Life with Christ. Right? A true interior life. Life that comes from knowing that I'm loved, that I'm accompanied by Jesus in the sacraments. I'm forgiven by Him in the sacrament of confession. He comes to me in the sacrament of, of the Blessed Eucharist. Especially when I go to Mass and I receive Communion. Right? When I receive the Eucharist. I have a friendship with Jesus when I talk to him during the day. And I have moments which are just me and him. And so, Jesus, I look at death and I realize, yeah, sometimes, or maybe all the time, I am afraid of that. And then I'm reminded of the words of St. Jose Maria, which say that he actually was not afraid of death. That death for him, because he trusted God and, he's in, in, and he was always striving to be close to God, death would be the doorway to life, to eternal life, to heaven. So Jesus is by my side. May I not be afraid, but rather to live this life with you, Lord. To be like Lazarus and Martha and Mary, who were friends of yours. And Jesus, you also want to be friends with us. And so may we spend each day growing in this friendship with Christ so that whenever our time comes, the time for us to die, it will be the door through which we pass in order to spend the rest of eternity with Christ. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, 
intercede for me.